Have you ever wondered if you even were intuitive? Or maybe you've seen other people talk about seeing spirits and that scares the heck out of you. Maybe you're just thinking, I don't know about this stuff. Like, I've dabbled in a couple things, but I'm not really seeing a lot of results. Well, if you find yourself saying you're not intuitive, but yet you find yourself in the right place, saying the right things at the right time, and you've had a little synchronicity, like, oh, I was just thinking about this person and they contacted me, or I just picked up my phone and I had a phone call, then stay tuned. Today, I'm going to talk about the channeler intuitive language. Welcome to Spiritual and Ambitious. I'm your host, Whitney McNeil. I'm a certified medium and spiritual teacher, and I help spiritual and ambitious souls just like you live your life purpose through your career and attract abundance by connecting into your intuition and spirit guide. Let's get spiritual and ambitious. Before we get started today, I wanted to talk about a giveaway that we have. We actually did this back in April for people who did my free challenge, and I wanted to do it here for my podcast listeners. So what you can do is find me on Instagram and follow my page, and you can do that at instagram.com forward slash messenger of spirit. So follow me and then comment on my latest post. And then just send me a DM. And when you do those three things, you'll be entered to win a free three card reading with me. It's so fun. I actually don't do one on one readings anymore. So this is a fun way to have this giveaway. The winner will get to ask me a question and I'll do a three card reading poll. Why not? Let's stay connected. Oh, and also, I think I'm supposed to say something like, Instagram is no way affiliated with this giveaway or something of that sort. And you have to be 18 years or older. Okay, so follow me on Instagram, comment on my latest post and DM me and say hi, it would be good to connect there. All right, so let's talk about the channeler. So if you've been listening to me for a while, you know that I have a course called Four Intuitive Languages, where I teach people how to clearly communicate with their spirit guides and understand the messages that they're getting through their intuitive language. And if you are brand new to me, I actually have a quiz you can take and I'll link to it in the show notes. But one of the intuitive languages is the channeler. So when we say the channeler, we normally think, oh, I'm channeling information from spirit. Does this mean I'm a psychic or a medium? What I am going to say is channelers have a great connection to their intuition, but it is so natural that they don't even know it. So it can look like channeling information to other people through readings, but not necessarily the case. So channelers get messages through their body and knowing, and they will say things from this place of wisdom that they have no idea where it came from, but they don't even understand it's not coming from them in the moment. They also can write, information can come through and they get really inspired and it comes through their body and they can just write all the messages coming out. Also, massage therapists, for instance, if you're a massage therapist and you're listening, you may just have lots of information and your body and your hands just kind of go where it needs to go. So let's talk about the channeler. Now, whenever somebody comes to me and they feel like they can't see their messages, hear their messages, or they don't feel anything, usually they say, I don't have an intuitive bone in my body. I remember one of my students said this to me before she started working with me. And she's like, good luck, Whitney. Like, I want to do this, but I don't think anything is coming out. And she started to understand, oh my gosh, yes, it is coming out. It's just not the way I expected. So whenever somebody works with me, I always say, don't expect, just allow, just let it come in. Now, channelers are different because the other intuitive languages, seer, owl, and empath, That usually has to do with a recognition of a message like, oh, I saw something, like I saw a color, or oh, I heard a voice, or I had a feeling. 
where channelers, if they only have this one language, will feel none of the above, and so they will then think that they are thus not intuitive. However, they are. Now, channelers can have a mix of languages, but if they have no other language, they just walk around feeling like they can't connect. Their language is feels a little bit more internal to where it's so quick and so connected to their body that they don't even have time to recognize that came from spirit because they've integrated it so naturally. So an example is their body is really intuitive. So if let's say they have a meeting or they're supposed to be somewhere and they have to take a car to get there, for an example, And their body is just, I cannot function all of a sudden, I'm really tired, like I have to take a nap, or I fell asleep and I'm late, that kind of stuff. Well, one, you know, I'm going to tell you, please go see a doctor and make sure everything's okay. But if all else is all right, what can happen is your body can get really like, I'm not going. You can tell me I'm going to go. I'm not doing it kind of deal. Your spirit guides are communicating with you through your intuitive language and your body is responding. So it's more about the response instead of my mind now understands this is a message. It's I'm responding to something and I'm doing it so quickly that I don't even have time to know if it was intuitive because it's so natural for me. So with that, if you fell asleep, then maybe your spirit guides were saving you from something. Maybe you didn't need to meet somebody that was going to be there. Maybe they, I don't know, I'm just saying maybe they were sick or maybe there's going to be a traffic jam. Whatever it is, knowing that's what it is. But also the reverse is true. Maybe you're not getting there on the time you want, but you're getting there in the time that you need. So I have a couple examples. I actually have so many, and I probably shared some of these with you, but One of the examples that I will share is when my husband and I wanted to meet a mentor that we've seen online and that we've taken programs from, but we never met in person. It was his birthday and we kept trying to leave on time, right? Kept trying to get there. And we just kept getting delayed over and over. And at the beginning of his day, he said, oh, you know what? That mentor that we would like to meet found out he was going to be in Sedona. Wouldn't it be really cool if we ran into him? So he kind of expressed that out to his spirit guides and put it out there into the universe. And anyway, we kept delaying and we had plans. We wanted to go to a dinner and a movie. Well, we were so late that there was no way we could do both. We had to choose one or the other. And all of a sudden, I blurted out, hey, do you want to go to Chipotle? Which, by the way, my husband's not a big fan of. And I don't know why I said it, right? I do know why I said it, but I'm just like knowing that it's not, he's not a fan of it. He said, sure. We go to Chipotle. Guess who we find there? We find the mentor. We get to talk to him. So that's an example of when you listen to your body. And so with that, One, I blurted a suggestion out, which was a channeler, but also even before that, we kept trying to leave and we just couldn't leave. And it was like, our body was tired. We needed to rest. And and then it was like one thing we're trying to get ready and, you know, our body would drop X, Y, Z and it would delay the cycle. And then we had to clean it up. So just kind of knowing that when you're thinking that the shit's hitting the fan, it's actually not. I always say to my students, hey, when things are changing externally in your environment, it's a sign that things are changing. And why are you going to assume the worst? Your spirit guides are conspiring in your favor, right? And I've also had examples where my spirit guides were saving me from something so that I didn't get there in the timeline that I wanted to, but my spirit guides knew the timeline I needed. And I rely on that every single time. When we follow our our natural body's responses and we are really in tune with our channeler language, And we really make sure that we're listening to our spirit guides, whether it's through your body, through actual listening, like the clear audience channel, through a feeling or through what they show you, you know you're on the right timing and the right path. And even when things don't work out the way your ego wants them to, your spirit guides are with you working things out the way they need to. 
You know, I shared an example where I was hiking with my husband in Sedona and we were getting ready to go down a path and I really wanted to go down this way and I could not get my legs to go. And I thought, well, what in the heck? And of course, my husband's like frustrated with me. Why aren't you, you know, moving? Why aren't we going? I'm like, I don't know, but I don't think that we're supposed to go down this way. And he's like, but why? I'm like, I do not know why, <laughs> but this is what it is for me. Of course, he's frustrated because he doesn't see a logical reason. But the more that you listen, the more that you know. And to this day, I don't know why. But I know that I've had so many instances where I do know why, that I trust it, and I know that I'm on the right path. So for the channeler, you get messages through the body. So let's just say that you have an opportunity or somebody's asking you to do something. You can respond with a yes or no based on, is my body like kind of vibratory and like all of a sudden I've got a lot of energy like, hell yeah, I want to do it, woo woo. Or is your body like, Ugh, no, like you get really heavy, get really tired kind of feeling. It's like, mm, not for me. So sometimes we talk about feeling where it's like a hell yeah or hell no. Whereas if you're a channeler, a couple things will happen. One, your body, how's your body responding? Is your body like kind of energized all of a sudden? Or is it like, I'm tired, I got to take a nap. Now, also the channeler just says stuff. So their body also speaks. So you just say stuff sometimes without you knowing what you're saying. So you can respond with a no. <laughs> then you're like, why? I don't have a reason. It's just a no. You don't have to have a reason. It's just a no. Or you can respond with a hell yeah, I want to do that. So sometimes there's no body kind of responds other than through your voice. It's more of a yes or a no. So yes, connecting to that channel alert language can be really helpful. So inside of my Four Intuitive Languages program, I teach my students how to do a body pendulum to really understand how your body can work for you. And also through automatic and inspirational writing, I think that it's really important to know that we've got exercises to develop this language. And it's not just what we're stuck with, we can actually learn it and speak it a lot more fluently. So after this quick break, I'm gonna come back and share with you other symptoms of having the Chandler intuitive language, but also three main things you need to make sure you're really speaking it fluently. This episode is sponsored by my free Spirit Guide Masterclass. Inside, you'll learn the five C's of Spirit Guide communication, your role with your Spirit Guides, two proven effective strategies to stop second guessing yourself, and your intuition, and the single most important step to understand your intuitive guidance, along with four ways to perceive your spiritual intuitive messages. You'll also be getting a workbook to go through this class as well. You can join at messengerspirit.com forward slash free class. As a professional psychic medium, I've done tens of thousands of readings but I felt a call to move more fully into teaching intuition, but I still get so many requests about doing readings. So while I don't do readings anymore, I have brought in some very trusted colleagues who are now available for live one-hour readings on Zoom. If you would like to book your psychic medium reading, go to messengerofspirit.com forward slash appointments to see our available readers and schedule your Zoom reading today. All right, we're back. Now let's talk about the channeler and saying stuff, <laughs> saying stuff you may not have wanted to say or saying stuff where you feel like you have no filter. So one of the symptoms of being a channeler is saying whatever it is that comes out. So for me, the channeler is probably my second primary language. My first is seeing, second is the channeler. So with that, people have told me I'm too direct sometimes. And that just happens. 
sometimes people will say, you know, Whitney, you seem a little cold, even though you're not, and you're really a warm person. I'm like, listen, I'm just saying whatever it is that I need to say. So authenticity is going to be really important for the channeler, by the way, because you really can't fake it. And you just say whatever you're going to say. So (laughs) it's going to be really important to utilize that. Making sure that you're actually connected to your spirit guides is going to be important because you've got this energy channel. And so spirit gives you messages the best way and the most natural way that your energy is built. So if you, let's just say as a personality, just kind of say whatever you think, then most likely you're going to have this channel alert language too because it's going to just come out more naturally that way for you. So you want to make sure that you're talking to your spirit guides and talking to your spirit guides and working with them about what you're saying to the people (laughs) around you so that it doesn't come off so completely harsh. But on the good side of this, channelers also find themselves in situations that they give beautiful wisdom advice and they don't even know where it came from. And they deliver these messages without even thinking they're a message. So they'll meet somebody at a grocery store or you'll find that maybe you're responding to somebody on social media. Maybe somebody ask a question in, in one of the groups or something of that sort. And you just type all these beautiful messages to this person. Now, for me, when I was a teenager, I used to write and I would write the most beautiful poems. Sounds like I'm tooting my own horn, but really it wasn't me, it was spirit. I'd write these beautiful things and I actually would write and I would submit for contests. And I ended up speaking at our graduation ceremony for my class based on this thing that I wrote. And it was this beautiful, eloquent, thing from spirit. I wouldn't have written that myself. And you could tell even sometimes when I would write, I would spell things differently. So even to this day, sometimes when I'm writing, I'll spell traveling with two L's, even though I live in America and we normally don't spell it that way. So this is an influence from someone else that lived somewhere else when they used to live on the earth plane. So understanding that you can channel messages too. So writers can channel messages. All my students listening right now who are in Spiritual Business Incubator, you can channel your sales pages or channel your email letters and things like that, or channel your email newsletters. Just knowing that your spirits that are around you can be really helpful. And so when I say spirits, I'm specifically talking about your spirit guides, because if you've ever worked with me, you know that Let's not be talking to random spirits. We don't need any randos over here. We just want to talk to your spirit guides and your spirit guides can filter any other spirits that need to come in. So understanding that it's not just speaking, it can also be writing, which is expressing yourself. Now, I do want to talk about the Chandler and the knowing. So the Chandler has a deep knowing. And it's just like, it's a fact. I just know it's a fact. I've shared a lot of different examples throughout these podcast episodes. One example is my mom. We were adopting these dogs. We had to go through this process of making sure we were approved to adopt. And they were these really sought after long hair baby chihuahuas that were so cute. We did a home visit And my mom just went to the store and started buying all these pet supplies. I was like, but why are you buying these pet supplies when you know that we need approval? They are seeing all these other people too. She's like, oh, there are dogs. And she was right. So a lot of times it's more so I know. And when we know, we take action. The Chandler is an action taker. I feel really inspired to Google Trips today. And then you find a great deal. So for me, I launched Intuition Abundance Academy in April, and I wanted to make sure I had great internet. So really, we live out in the boonies, and I needed a place that had really solid internet, which meant I needed to rent a place in Phoenix. And I felt really inspired. I found this great place, and it was like 25% off. I know I've shared this on an episode before, but that's an example of the Chandler taking action and taking inspired action. I've also done the same thing for trips and traveling. And, you know, I feel really inspired to look this person up and maybe you need a service that they provide in your business, or perhaps it's something that you needed to know about ahead of time. So it's more of, I'm going to take action 
And when you take that action, so many beautiful things happen. Maybe you decide to get in your car and you're like, I don't know where I'm going. Let's go here today. That's a great exercise for channelers. Like take a whole day to just go and drive and do whatever you want, explore different territory. And when you do that, you can meet the right people in the right places. So channelers take action. Maybe they jump on a Zoom call with somebody and they become lifelong friends, or they end up chatting with somebody at the gas station that leads them to somebody else, that leads them to another contact. And then they create beautiful things together. Maybe it's a romantic partner or a business opportunity or clients. So that's an example. Now, my mom being partly a channeler, she is a great connector. And this is something that can be really helpful for channelers too. So she'll go to all these different places and then she connects them. She'll say, I know so-and-so, why don't you connect with this person? And I have had so many clients actually from her because she'll say, why don't you look up my my daughter? <laughs> and it's just this knowing, it's just this thought. So oftentimes channelers find themselves in the right place at the right time, meeting the right people for themselves or for somebody else. As a quick little recap, the channeler can think they're not intuitive, but they are because it's so natural and they just didn't really realize that what they're doing was intuitive. They usually don't trust themselves because they want an external validation. And they oftentimes will say stuff that they didn't necessarily plan on saying it, and they'll find themselves in the right time and the right place. So what do channelers need? Channelers need spontaneity. They need to allow themselves to not fit into a schedule because if they fit into a schedule, they're never going to fully express their most beautiful channeler language because they're going to be restricted and their body needs to get out and to move. And that's one of the things that a channeler needs too. They need to actually move that energy. If they're not moving energetically through their body, they get stuck and the channeler will second guess himself to death. They will think and think and think and they'll be like, no, I can't get any messages and they block themselves. And what they really need to do is go on a walk. They might need to exercise. They might need to dance around the room. They may need to do breath work. They need to move energy in their body some way. So if somebody out there is like, well, I can't really exercise right now because I was in that place for six months after healing from a surgery, you can do breath work. You can sit and do breath work in and out. If you are feeling like, well, I just don't have a regular exercise routine, that's okay. I hate exercise too. You can just dance around your room. I do like going on walks though. So find something that works for you to get it out. Because if you have all this energy that's really, really excited in your energy field, you're not going to be able to actually get your messages because you have all this energy that's coming before it. And so if you can deplete that energy, it's a lot easier to get messages. Sometimes people will be like, I'm too tired to talk to my spirit guides. And I'm like, that's the best time to talk to them because your energy is right there to receive. Your ego can't put up a fight when you're tired. So with that being said, have more spontaneity, allow yourself to move energy in your body. You also need to do it consistently, which is why I say that you need to do intuitive exercises consistently so that you can trust yourself. And I do believe that you need validation when you are really learning how spirit communicates with you. Now, sometimes people say, well, if I need validation, isn't that ego? not in intuition at first when you're learning your language. Now, if you always need validation, no, we got to talk about that. And when I teach people mediumship, yeah, that's ego. We don't chase down the people that we gave messages to to see if they were right. I'm talking about when you are wanting to trust yourself more, it's great to have some validation. That's why I talk about doing partner exercises. And I also talk about writing your messages down and reflecting on what has happened so you can see how everything had lined up so perfectly. Spirit aligns things really perfectly in our life. I'm gonna share with you a kind of a sad story, which I'm sure you're like, I'm not here for your podcast to be sad, but it's a real life story. And I think it's gonna be really impactful and important for you to hear. So my grandmother, when she was still alive, she hung on to this earth plane world for way longer than I truly think her spirit was ready to be. Now, I can go into why spirits hang on the earth plane in a different episode, but 
it was causing a lot of stress in the family for her daughters, especially, who were taking care of her. So my grandmother was 95 when she passed, but her daughters are in their 70s. And it was really like a full-time job. So she needed full-time care. When you're in that highly emotional state, it's, it's really hard to even say it's a burden. But if I'm being really real, it was. And on a spiritual level, knowing that, hey, let's see what's going on here. So I was chatting with my spirit guides about this. Like I said, my mom is a channeler. I really believe that her sister is as well. Well, they had this thing in hospice where they will relieve a caretaker like once a quarter. So they had it set up for her to go in for a week just so that her full-time caretaker could have a break, which is my aunt. And so they had it all set up. My mom and my aunt went together to take my grandmother into the hospice facility so that my aunt could have a break. When she got there, the staff at the hospice center messed up her diabetic medicine, which caused her to go into a shock and they had to rush her into the emergency room. Now, of course, as a family member, you immediately get really mad at those people that were in the hospice taking care of her because they really messed up her medicine. But because she was in the emergency room, they did blood work and they found a lot of things that told she was very close to transitioning. She survived that initial rush to the emergency room and was able to communicate and she came back to hospice. But because that happened, my family then could prepare for her passing in the coming week, which was really beautiful. And she did. She passed and I was able to have a video call with her. I was able to record that conversation. I'm getting a little emotional right now, which is okay. But it was really, really beautiful the way that spirit organized it. So when we get mad at things that are not happening on our timeline, or we think things are a mistake, and we're really mad at somebody for messing up, seeing how This voluntary time to put her in hospice for a week just so the caretaker could get a relief was organized so my mom could go up and my aunt was there and they got to do it on their terms. The mistake that the staff made wasn't necessarily perhaps a mistake. It was a place where we could really see the doctors at the hospital saw what was going on. And then it was a chance for all of us to prepare to say goodbye. And so when I talked to my mom, at first they had some regrets and I was able to have this conversation with her about, hey, this is a really beautiful experience. And I reminded her, I said, you know, you were really confident that absolutely she needed to go into this temporary hospice relief program just for a week for your sister to have some relief. She's like, yeah, we 100% felt that was the right thing to do. And I said, you know, that was that channeler intuitive language saying, this is the right thing to do. And when you follow those things, knowing that spirit has your back every step of the way, and they plan things so beautifully, even when you think that maybe it's not. Hindsight is always 2020. And now the beautiful thing is my mom has peace and my aunt has peace, and they have no regrets. All right, so I'm leaving you on that note. I wish I could find something a little bit more positive, but I thought it was hopefully very inspiring for you. And I would love to see you over on Instagram. Come over and say hi to me, and check the show notes to take the quiz for your intuitive language. Now I'll see you in the next episode, but until then, Here's to staying spiritual and ambitious. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. And if you loved it, would you please share it with a friend? I would also love your review and a reminder to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find me at messengerspirit.com and you can take the four intuitive languages quiz and find show notes there too. If you want to connect on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, you can find me at messenger of spirit. 
If you want to continue the conversation, join my free Facebook group at messengerofspirit.com forward slash group. I'll meet you right here next week. Here's to staying spiritual and ambitious. This podcast is part of the Sound Advice FM network. Sound Advice FM, women's voices amplified.